news came about how this planet Venus is even more weirder because some researchers claim to have found biosignatures in the clouds of the planet Venus. Scientists have found phosphine gas in the clouds of the planet Venus. This means there might be life on the planet Venus. How can just finding a gas give an idea about the existence of life on the planet Venus? We didn't go to Venus to find the gas. We actually just directed our telescopes. <laughs> we captured the light coming from the clouds of the Venus and we were able to find this gas phosphine in the clouds of Venus. So as you know, in my last video I explained the atmosphere of Venus is 90 times denser than the atmosphere on Earth. What does that mean? That means our clouds are up there, our clouds come and go. They don't stay at the same place for a very long time. But in case of Venus, the clouds are there forever. So there's a possibility that life can thrive in the ever existing clouds. Carl Sagan had suggested this uh, as early as 1967. He wrote in some magazine about the possibility of life in the clouds of planet Venus. Now why the clouds? Because at about 38, 35 to 38 kilometers, it has water, it has organic material, and it has all the conditions that can support some kind of anaerobic life form, not only to be formed, but also to kind of reproduce and sustain themselves. And by the way, the clouds are very dense, between 90 to 100 kilometers of thick atmosphere, and it's heavily concentrated with carbon dioxide gas, as I explained in the last video. If you haven't watched it, please go to this link. So, very thick atmosphere, about 90 kilometers in thickness, 96.5% is carbon dioxide, and the clouds are made of sulfuric acid. Very, 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 very acidic. So life on the surface of this planet is not possible. Now, interestingly, on terrestrial planets, so what are terrestrial planets? Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are called rocky planets or terrestrial planets. The other four, i.e. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, these are called gas giants. These are huge, much, much bigger in size planets, and they are made of gas. They don't have rock. They don't have a surface on which you can step on. Anyways, so on terrestrial planets, such as Earth, Mars, Mercury, and of course Venus, it's not possible to produce phosphine gas just by natural chemical reactions because it needs a lot of temperature and pressure to create conditions for phosphine gas to produce. So it needs life forms such as anaerobic bacteria. So probably this phosphine gas emanating out of the clouds of Venus are a result of some kind of anaerobic bacteria or some anaerobic life form metabolizing the sulfur compounds in the clouds and as a byproduct of that they are producing phosphine gas in such quantities that we on earth can detect the presence in the clouds of Venus. Interestingly this phosphine gas is also found to be emanating from big gassy giant planets i.e. Jupiter and Saturn but the reason is because they have enough temperature and pressure in the middle of them that it creates conditions for natural formation of this gas. But Phosphine was not a biosignature until very recently and even now it has not been established that it is a biosignature. So first, what is a biosignature? For example, water and oxygen. Now these are very good biosignatures. Bio, life, signatures, signatures. And so these compounds of life are called biosignatures. Now what's very interesting about phosphine is, phosphine actually kills us humans. It was used as a chemical weapon during the First World War. It's also used in pesticides to kill the small insects. We have anaerobic bacteria in the volcanoes and marshy areas. We know wherever we have anaerobic bacteria, we find phosphine. But the causality has not been established. We don't know if these anaerobic bacteria create phosphine directly or they create some other compound 
which then interacts with other gases in the atmosphere and create phosphine. So this idea about phosphine being a biosignature is very new and people are still doing research. We don't know for sure the mechanism. We don't know if it is a 100% guaranteed biosignature or not. Now, how sitting on Earth do we know that there must be this gas emanating from the clouds of planet Venus? Well, the answer is very interesting. To understand how we can find that Sun has 22% helium, 78% hydrogen, and similarly Jupiter has the same chemical composition as Sun. Uh, actually, Jupiter was almost a star, but it couldn't for some reason. But the chemical composition in Jupiter is still very similar to that of a star. It has about 80% hydrogen and 20% helium. But anyway, how do we know? Sitting here, how do we know that these heavenly bodies have this chemical composition? And for that, we'll have to understand spectroscopy. What is spectroscopy? So, spectro, spectrum, spectrum of light. Scopy, scope, to see. Now, we have two kinds of spectroscopy. First is what we call absorption spectroscopy. Now, what happens if you take light and pass it through a prism? What happens is you get seven colors of light, V, I, B, G, Y, O, R, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Okay, now imagine you pass the light through a cloud of hydrogen gas, and then at the end of that, you pass the resulting light through a prism. What you get is, you get the spectrum of light, but you find some lines. You will find this kind of thing. Now, this is what you call the absorption spectrum of hydrogen gas. Every time light passes through hydrogen gas, you get exact same lines in exact same places on the spectrum. So this is kind of a barcode very specific to hydrogen gas. Similarly, for helium, what if you pass uh, light through a cloud of helium gas? Well, what you find is these black lines, but in a little bit different locations on the spectrum. These black lines in the light spectrum are specific to a certain compound or element or gas. So every single compound or element, we have a specific pattern where you'll see black lines, uh, these black gaps in the spectrum of light. And so just by looking at the light coming from a star or a planet and passing it through, uh, let's say, a prism and seeing the pattern that results from that, we can find what gases, what chemical compounds are there on this planet or this heavenly body. So what I just told you is this pattern. You have the spectrum and you have black lines in there. This is what we call absorption spectroscopy. But on Earth, we already have, let's say, hydrogen gas. If you give it some energy, the electrons, they go to a higher state. What happens if you then take energy away? Well, then in that case, what happens is the electrons then come back to their original position in the atom. And when they come back, actually, it emits light uh, in the form of photons. And then what you get is this. We call this emission spectrum. The light was emitted out of the atom. Now, if you look carefully, what you see is this and this. So this looks like the negative of this photograph. And that's exactly what our scientists do. They see the light coming from a planet or a star, and we already have these barcodes, what we call the uh, emission spectroscopy pattern. We just see if they match. And if they match, voila, that's the compound or element this planet or star has. It's so simple. <laughs> so when the absorption and emission uh, spectrums match, we know oh, it's the same element, it's the same atom, it's the same compound. And so that's what we found. We sent infrared rays to the planet Venus, we analyzed the light, and we found that, yes, the clouds of planet Venus have phosphine gas. And this is the way scientists found. So there are many gaps in this theory that there may be life on the planet Venus uh, just because we found phosphine. First of all, phosphine is not a 100% confirmed biosignature. It's still a, a probable candidate for biosignature. We don't know how anaerobic microbes produce phosphine. 
Is it a direct result of their metabolism or is it an indirect result of their metabolism? Because if it's an indirect result, then we don't know because then on Venus there may be some kind of different chemistry happening that might result in phosphine gas. So, <laughs> so that's the gap. And the second is we haven't collected enough data because the coronavirus thing came in and all the research was stopped. So scientists still have to find more samples, still have to find the traces at more different wavelengths. And then only we can establish that at least there is uh, confirmed phosphine gas emanating from the clouds. It is phosphine gas and probably then we have life on planet Venus. So I hope I was able to decode, simplify this news for you. If you like it, please share it in your groups as much as possible. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.